The Bitcoin Group, the American original. For over the last 10 seconds, the sharpest Satoshis, the best Bitcoins, the hardest cryptocurrency talk. We'd like to welcome our panelists, Davi Barker from Shiny Badges and Bitcoin Not Bombs. How's it going? Derek J. Freeman from Bitcoin Talk Show. Hey, y'all. Chris J. from Feathercoin. Hello. Christoph Atlas from World Crypto Network. Good to be here. Megan Lords from Bitcoin, not bombs. Thanks for having me. Paige Peterson from San Francisco, Bitcoin. Good afternoon. Will Pangman from Bitcoin, Milwaukee. Hey, everybody. And I'm Thomas Hunt from Mad Bitcoins. We're on to issue one. Walmart sues Visa. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. Maybe the enemy of my enemy is my enemy. But for the time being, Walmart could be Bitcoin's best friend. They already offer prepaid Visa cards. Why not prepaid Bitcoin cards? And they're clearly tired of paying Visa's exorbitant swipe fees. Will Walmart be the first major chain to accept Bitcoin in their stores? Davi Barker. You know, I read this article and maybe I missed it, but I was confused as to whether they were suing them just because they thought they were price gouging or if they were suing them because Visa actually overcharged and owed them a whole lot of money. But fundamentally, I think the thing that makes this story interesting is that it's sort of a mockery. It makes a mockery of legacy systems. Like, imagine if the headline were Walmart sues Bitcoin. <laughs> like, it couldn't happen, right? Derek J. I think Walmart could do it. They could train their employees to accept Bitcoin directly, and it would be a major shift in uh, retailers accepting Bitcoin and cutting out those fees from major credit cards. Chris J., do they even have Walmart in England? Nope, but I, we know all about it. We have, like, Tesco's and other, you know, pilot high, sell it cheap like stores. Um, I had no idea that Walmart had such tight operating margins that they would even notice a small percentage fee. So maybe something else is is going on. I can see how this might be an issue for small businesses. I didn't quite realize how this would impact on a large. But I would say that I'm sensing an element of greed here. Are they just wanting more of the, a slice of the cake against a middleman that they're thinking it's hard for them to justify their position anymore? That's what I'm. That's what I'm thinking. I don't think it's realistic that a high street um, chain like Walmart would have adopt Bitcoin anytime soon, though. You know what they say on Wall Street: greed is good. Christoph Atlas. Yeah, uh, whenever you see one corporation suing another for uh, antitrust or whatever, it sounds a lot like the, uh, the pot calling the kettle black, but um, yeah, why, why wouldn't they switch to something like Bitcoin to cut down on those fees? I know that um, even though these, these major retailers have had relationships with Visa and MasterCard for a long time, it's mostly a resentful a relationship. They don't really appreciate having that profit margin cutting out cut out of their, their operations. So um, I think that would be a win for them. Of course, they're such a large corporation that um, they may not have the nimbleness to uh, you know, take such drastic or new uh, measures in terms of the, the business you know, decisions that they're making. They can pilot it in a smaller country. Walmart is all over the flipping world. So maybe they could do it in uh, you know, South America or something like that before they try to bring it to the United States. Megan Lords. So this is interesting because Gift just announced that they're going to be allowing uh, Bitcoin gift cards uh, for Walmart. But this highlights something that's even more major and something that I always try to tell people, our business owners, when I'm trying to get them started on Bitcoin, is the fees are so low. Why would anyone pay these ridiculous credit card fees as a merchant? Um, it, it hurts your profit margins uh, and, and it hurts the businesses. So Bitcoin is better for merchants and it's better for people who are wanting to uh, patronize those businesses. So this highlights a key part of why Bitcoin is superior to all of these credit card companies. So I think it's a good first step. I do think it is kind of the pot calling the kettle black, but it's going to highlight this issue of credit card companies for your average person. So I think that's a good thing. Paige Peterson. 
Yeah, in general, I think it's good that these dinosaurs are kind of fighting each other to uh, show how ridiculous it all is. Um, but I do know that Walmart is kind of trying to become less archaic and um, try to reach out into the digital age. Like, they have um, an online retail store and stuff like that. So I think that if they were to start accepting Bitcoin, they should definitely start on their online store because, obviously, Bitcoin is best for the Internet. Um, and then that would definitely be a great starting point, and then maybe after that start accepting it in their stores. Um, yeah, and also with the gift cards, I'm not sure, just because Gift did announce that they're going to be accepting um, payment for uh, Walmart cards, so, I mean, it might be good competition for them, who knows, so I'd say Will go for Pengman. them. Sorry, bitch. Will Pangman. Yeah, so I, I know Walmart in the past has gotten a bad rap, deservedly so, for you know their own questionable antitrust uh, strategies and stuff. Um, but if if we're envisioning or, or talking about like free market behavior here, um, the the lawsuit was a class action lawsuit, and they they pulled out of it along with uh, Amazon and Target to seek damages all on their own, which weakens essentially the class action lawsuit, but perhaps goes after Visa in a much more aggressive way by piling on more individual lawsuits of these corporations against Visa. And the, the lawsuits are for excessive fees charged by Visa in general. So the fact that um, merchants uh, have to pay you know, on small transactions a really high percentage of a fee, and on decent or moderate to large size transactions, it's anywhere from two and a half to five percent. So that's egregious and what Walmart does, I mean this is par for the course, they they don't, they lower prices for the consumer which is great, right, that's all good and all that. Um, they've gone about it in a myriad of questionable ways but in some very legitimate ways. I think this is one of those legitimate ways. Uh, they're, you know, another legitimate way is to try to work with your producers um, to lower your costs with them and I know they've strong-armed producers in the past, which is bad, but um, this is, again, just another cost of theirs. They're trying to, to clean up, to tidy up, tighten up, and um, I think well, having Walmart on your side in this class action lawsuit, um, I know they're not a part of it anymore, but it's huge. Um, it's like having uh, Goliath on your team on all, like, a bunch of Davids, and Goliath, you just uh, traded for Goliath on your team or something like that. It's great. So I think it's, I think it's awesome. Credit card feeds need to go the way of the dodo bird. Bitcoin is forcing the issue um, as far as Walmart accepting Bitcoin. Yeah, I don't see it anytime soon. It'd be great if they could learn the lesson from Overstock, but um, I think this is a good thing, that Walmart is suing Visa, that anyone is suing Visa for their high fees is a good thing. It's incredibly strange bedfellows, but we'll take what we can get, right? Exit question. If not Walmart, who's next? Name the next brick-and-mortar retailer to accept Bitcoin, and why? Davi Barker. You know, when I think about big box stores that are in the lead technologically, I think of Fry's Electronics. And I think that it would be pretty huge if you saw a, a big company like Fry's Electronics or maybe Radio Shack adopt Bitcoin and be at the front of the, the, front of the herd on that one. Don't put fries next to Radio Shack. <laughs> Eric J. Yeah, I think a tech brick and mortar would make sense because they're already serving the Bitcoin market anyway. Places like Best Buy and Radio Shack, as Davi mentioned. Then again, it could be a restaurant or a convenience store or a market that serves all demographics. You know, any business with tight margins, like Chris mentioned, Walmart, uh, they'll look to Bitcoin as an alternative to the steep credit card transaction fees. And it's not just about the fees that's going to drive them this way, probably security as well with after Target lost tens of millions of uh, private consumer data. So stores are going to look for alternatives and that means Bitcoin. Chris, Jay. Well, most of the shops in the UK now are just phone shops. You've got a few bargain basement, you know, those places where you just spend a dollar on everything. Um, so we don't actually have a whole lot of retail sector left in the UK, but I think a real shoe-in for this would be a large hotel sort of chain, because if you think about it, Bitcoin kind of makes sense for vacationing. Um, and I think, yeah, if you've got a global, a global currency, I think this makes a lot of sense for anyone working in the travel industry. 
So that it's would be much better than travelers checks, and they have locations mm -hmm. all over. So it would be a good move. Christoph Atlas. I don't have a particular business in mind, but what I can say is that um, it's going to be a business that uh, is relatively new, something that's come out in the last few years. A really important consideration with accepting Bitcoin in your store is these point-of-sale systems. And in my professional life, I've looked at some of these point-of-sale point systems, both in terms of what's going on in the, at the, the actual machines in the store and the back end. A lot of them are incredibly old and archaic, and they're not going to integrate Bitcoin anytime soon. Uh, so the, the newer businesses are ones that are going to have more modern software just because uh, they bought it more recently. So it's going to be something like that unless um, there is a new kind of payment processor, processor that comes in that um, allows you to, like, integrates with the swipe technology. They come out with a Bitcoin card that you can swipe that's going to work with the existing machines, something along, along those lines. But we're not going to see, um, you know, Walmart can't do what Tiger Direct is able to do in terms of integrating Bitcoin directly into their back end. It's just, it's a, a totally different ball game. And so that's going to be one of the limitations moving forward. I agree, Christoph. The, uh, the point of sale system is a major issue, but that's why Bitcoin adopters have said for a while, if you see a restaurant that has uh, iPads as menus already, those are the people you need to target to accept Bitcoin because it's right there. All they have to do is turn it on. Megan, Lords. So the other organizations in the class action lawsuit that Walmart left were Target and Amazon. And I think it's realistic to see someone like Target taking Bitcoin because Walmart is one of their main competitors. And they want to be seen as, you know, newer and kind of, you know, engaging uh, newer technology and younger generations and things like that. Um, and I think if Walmart jumps on board with it, you definitely see someone like Target coming in. Again, I really want to see more, you know, smaller local businesses, like independently owned businesses taking Bitcoin. But as far as big box stores, I think uh, if Walmart jumps on board or if they uh, express interest, I think Target's going to be looking at it too. Paige Peterson. Yeah, so as far as big box stores, I agree with Derek in that um, I think uh, Best Buy is a really good, has an opportunity, especially because they have those vending machines um, in airports where you can buy actual things. So um, it would be good to, you know, implement it maybe in the vending machines first as a test to see if people use it and then, you know, go forward and start accepting it on online and then also then in their retail store. That's a good idea, Paige. Those vending machines where you can buy iPods and phones and headphones, all kinds of stuff would be perfect for Bitcoin. Will Pangman. Yeah, I really like Paige's idea. Um, there's a couple I can think of. Uh, one I recently heard, um, the marketing person, uh, the marketing officer from Tiger Direct say that, you know, I guess they have retail stores for Tiger Direct in Canada, and um, I uh, presume they'll be rolling that out up there in those retail stores, which would be great. Um, I think another very uh, two, two well-run companies that are well-liked by their employees, their suppliers, and all this stuff. They are Publix, which is a grocery store chain in the south, mostly in Florida, and then also Costco. Um, both have the leadership ideologies that I think would align somewhat closely with Bitcoin, a, lot, a la um, uh, the Overstock CEO. And uh, I think those two would be great. Uh, you know, they both are working on keeping costs down for their customers as well. And I know Publix doesn't take Visa or MasterCard, only cash, debit, and American Express, which is interesting. That's a great point, Will. And Costco has a similar situation where they only take cash, debit, or Amex. So it would be great to have a third option there. They're also a very liberal company. I've heard they pay their employees pretty well and are union. So issue two, Square accepts Bitcoin. That goofy thing you put on top of your smartphone isn't so goofy anymore. Square announced that it will allow its customers to accept Bitcoin for their online stores. Fingers crossed that it's soon coming to their portable software as well. Online retailer Stripe has also added Bitcoin report support. Are we on the verge of Bitcoin mass online adoption? Derek J. Well, this is the closest news to total Bitcoin mass adoption that I've ever heard. So it's very exciting. Thousands of retailers discovered overnight that they could accept Bitcoin at no extra effort or cost. I mean, it's only a matter of time before these merchants become Bitcoin users. 
and the Bitcoin economy grows independently from there. So the next step is for merchants like Overstock.com and these new merchants with Square to source their inventory in Bitcoin. That's really going to be the next level. Chris, Jay. Yeah, I'd, I'd echo all of that. I think this sends a really powerful signal in the market um, for other uh, bigger players. But more importantly, it also helps to uh, facilitate the, the pop-up shop. In the UK, we have this kind of phenomena where people just set up a, a, a shop like, you know, just spontaneously to, to sell whatever they happen to, to have in. And I've seen a few of them with, with the Square App. So good on Jack Dorsey uh, for doing this. And uh, yeah, I hope that the other retailers will take this as a good, powerful signal. Christoph, Atlas. I'm most excited about the idea that this could be the first step before Square tries to get that integrated into their mobile uh, payments because uh, that's, that's a really decentralized way of, of operating businesses and they're all over the place. I've been seeing them for a long time. Uh, of course, the challenge there is the app market stores, right? So it's going to be, if they do that, it'll be on Android really easily, but what about the iPhone, the iOS devices? Um, I think that uh, the Apple might have something to say about integrating Bitcoin into the Square app for their store. Um, so that could be a disappointment. On the other hand, maybe Square is such a powerful player in the iOS app store. Uh, maybe they have the ear of Apple to the point where they could actually persuade Apple to allow it. And they have a kind of relationship with Apple that you know blockchain.info doesn't have. So uh, that, I think it's a very exciting possibility. That would be great, Christoph. Uh, Square could be our champion and fight Apple and maybe get something back for us. Megan, Lords. That's what I'm most interested also is how this is going to work with Apple because it's so difficult now to get Apple users on board with Bitcoin with all of the things they've done to block it. So I really hope that this can, this kind of wakes Apple up in a way and it's like, you know, Square has been around for a really long time. They're very reputable. So uh, I, I hope that opens the door for uh, them to be kind of more open-minded towards it. So yeah, this is this is great news and this obviously shows that so many companies are getting sick of, you know, the credit card companies and they've realized how awesome Bitcoin can be for their business. So we're definitely on the verge of mass adoption. Paige Peterson. Yeah, so this is really great for uh, the opportunity so that people can easily accept Bitcoin for um, uh, small merchants and um, pop-up shops and stuff like that. Um, I think it's uh, a great opening to... Uh, have people just see Bitcoin as a general alternative uh, for payments. Um, I'm not sure that it's going to propel it in that the sense where people are using it more than uh, Visa or MasterCard, but I think it's just a great way to sort of, you know, show people that it's out there and it's being accepted by a bunch of different kinds of people and, like, the people actually turning the option on um, and actually accepting it is another metric that we'll see if they'll actually just implement it or just say, I don't really want to do it. So. Will Pangman. Yeah, I think this is great. Um, I think by the end of the year, uh, I know we wait for predictions till the end of the show, but I really think by the end of the year we'll see lots of these kinds of um, online payment gateways, payment service providers accepting Bitcoin. Um, one right after the other, and I think it was kind of uh, what we'll see is a waterfall that really started with Overstock, pretty much, um, and it's coming. It's coming throughout the next, like, eight months or so, I would say. Uh, I'm really excited to see people start using it. You know this community is going to start using this, uh, this feature because they already use those companies so much. So it, it's also really good stripe um, for contractors and freelancers getting paid online who now will probably be requesting more from, uh, you know, uh, from their the jobs they're getting that they be paid in Bitcoin and oh yeah we t you know you can pay me that through Stripe and stuff, so it's good. Uh, we'll see a lot of this going on by the end of the year. Right now, maybe just a murmur, but uh, yeah, it's exciting. Davi Barker. I want to put forward a scenario where I believe that this could not only promote adoption but actually replacement of the dollar. Because if you look at the square, I mean, it's, it's usually used in places like farmer's markets or, or individual sole proprietors who, who need a, a very dense infrastructure because they don't have a brick-and-mortar store, right? Now, if it happens that 
the square, which is this piece of, of electronics that plugs into your phone, is used for scanning credit cards, but the Square app produces a QR code similar to the apps that we're all familiar with, well, it's going to happen that those merchants put out the Bitcoin Accepted Here sticker, because why not? Why turn away business? And and I don't know if you guys have ever had, like, Bluetooth hands-free earpieces or, or anything like that, but it's very easy to misplace these bizarre little attachments to our electronic devices, which means from time to time, someone in a farmer's market is going to go, oh, man, I forgot my square, but I can still use the app. And suddenly, for that day, they are a Bitcoin-only establishment. And when that happens, they're going to realize how, how superior it is, how much more efficient it is, how much less the fees are, and they're going to begin to want to transition off of the dollar. Exit question. Which online retailer will accept next? And do we even care? Is it special anymore, or have they missed the boat? Derek J. Yeah, I'd like to see Walmart start accepting it online and test it out there before training all of their thousands of employees to start accepting Bitcoin payments directly. I mean, do we get excited about this news anymore? I do, but I think most Bitcoiners stopped being surprised months ago, and people like us are waiting for retailers to make a real splash by accepting Bitcoin directly. No one has missed the boat yet. Any company that chooses today to accept Bitcoin will be inviting a whole host of news articles to give them free publicity. Chris, Jay. I think only it'll only become exciting when it reaches the next order of magnitude, like an Amazon or something. I think as it kind of trickles around the same strata of merchant, I think we're just going to kind of get uh, bored by it. I would warn, though, that once it does get to those high levels, I suspect that those companies are going to use it as a way of marketing because Bitcoin is a, is a very popular searchable keyword on Google. It's all, it's all the hype and the rage at the moment. And so I wonder if some of these merchants are just trying to piggyback off of the Bitcoin brand. I'm also a little bit concerned once you get those larger merchants on board about how much Bitcoin they start holding as a speculative venture, just like we saw Apple inflate the bond market in the US with all of its cash reserves which then created a bubble in, in, in that market. Um, as Max Kaiser noted, why don't they just pay their staff more? Um, you might notice the same kind of thing with Bitcoin. And of course, what that's going to do, if, if merchants do start hoarding their Bitcoins, is that starts inflating the price for everyone until, of course, they need to, to sell it off, at which point it might cause some extra volatility. So with that caveat in place, yeah, I would say, let's see Amazon take it. Christoph, Atlas. <laughs> Um, I think that each on, online retailer that uh, joins in into accepting Bitcoin, they're going to get a little bit less out of it each time. Part of the reason for that is because uh, you know, one of the motivations to do that is there's this Bitcoin community. They're really excited about Bitcoin being used. And so when you start accepting Bitcoin, they're like, oh, yeah, I want to support you. Great. And they'll spend their money buying stuff. But they can't just fill their house up with like mountains of crap from every possible store that accepts Bitcoin, right? It's gonna it's gonna be a diminishing returns that you get from that. And what they're gonna have to do is invest more in terms of bringing new people into Bitcoin rather than trying to you know wring that that towel of the existing you know fan base of Bitcoin. Although if you if you bought Bitcoin early, you could buy a huge mountain of crap. <laughs> That's Thank true. You, lords. Yes, we need to see more people in Bitcoin first uh, before adding more retailers. Because I know, like, I'm, I'm like almost out of money. Like, I can't afford to buy more stuff as much as I'd like to see someone like Newegg or Amazon taking Bitcoin. I mean, you know, a lot of us, at least what I've noticed, one of the people I know at Bitcoin are kind of holding back uh, right now. So I would like to see more of a focus on growing the Bitcoin community, but if it comes down to, you know, which online retailer I'd like to see, someone like Newegg, um, and then Amazon, I think, would be the obvious choice for uh, just reaching a wider uh, variety of people. Paige Peterson. Yeah, so um, I definitely agree that Amazon would be the best uh, choice if, the, if they were to be the next one, um, but I'm also excited to see just new retailers pop up um, to accept Bitcoin only, possibly, or to use the uh, Stripe and Square models so that it's easier for them to accept all different kinds. I'd be uh, more excited about just like the marketplaces that open up because of this. Will Pangman. Netflix. Um, I think 
they've probably been one of the most disruptive um, companies or technologies since maybe BitTorrent in terms of the entertainment industry. And uh, it just kind of makes sense. I mean, they're cool on disrupting the studio model for production of things like uh, quality programming, a la, you know, the, the really only great places to watch quality programming anymore is you could put AMC in there. They have plenty of great shows, Breaking Bad, um, God Rest Its Soul, and whatnot. But HBO and now Netflix is really just taking off. All of their programming that's exclusive from, from them is fantastic. And uh, they're disrupting the heck out of that model. Bitcoin would make sense for them. Other disruptive online companies, too, should, should consider this like now. I don't know why Uber and Lyft um, and, and others like that. Uh, if you're disruptive and that's your goal is disruption because you see, um, you see market demand you're, that are needs that are not being met, this is, a, this is one of the best tools for your company. Netflix would be a great get, Will. Imagine people subscribing with a few Bitcoin in their account. Their account could be paid forever. Who knows? Davi, Barker. I missed the question. Sorry, was, what was that? Uh, what, what retailer online should accept next? Oh, um, I mean, all of them. <laughs> um, <laughs> all of them. Very. There's, there's no reason not to, you know. Um, who would be big? I'd like to. I'd still like to see a video game industry like double down on on Bitcoin. I'd like to see something like Blizzard or or one of those. World of Warcraft does seem like an obvious choice. It's virtual already. Maybe they have a World of Warcraft two, something they could relaunch with. Anything with a market simulation in the game, it's really a natural fit. That would be good. Moving on, issue three, Mount Gox allegedly misused client funds. Former employees of Magic the Gathering online exchange went on a rampage this weekend, alleging that client funds were used not only to keep the exchange afloat, but also to buy personal items from Mr. Carpellis, including a robot, a 3D printer, and a souped-up Honda Civic imported from Britain. Mount Gox, worst Bitcoin exchange, or the worst Bitcoin exchange ever? Chris J. My God, I've spoken way too much about this loser. That's that's not the case of the worst Bitcoin exchange. That's fraud. I've only just heard about it uh, when you sent through things. I was so busy on other things. Um, I was reading the articles on it. Um, I don't know what to say. I've got nothing to say except for the fact that how on earth did he think he was going to get away with it for that long? He must have been deluded. There were stories about meetings where staff members were like trying to get him in, back in 2012, right? So all that stuff about going up to April, all that during the, the DDoS, all of that drama that happened, he knew he didn't have enough money. I mean, how on earth he was able to get away with it for so long and for so many people that were around him who kind of had a strong suspicion for, for them to keep quiet for this long is quite staggering. Lost for words, really. I love the little details in the story. He's in Japan already, but he imports a Honda from Britain. Why not? Why not? You got all those Bitcoins. Why not? <laughs> Why not? Christoph Atlas. I guess this goes to show that uh, just because you are someone with a vision, uh, and the company that does not mean that you're going to do right by the uh, the community that you're serving um, as customers. Um, yeah, this is a this is pretty silly. Um, Mark Capelli's kind of looks like the Three Stooges in one person. I can only imagine how stressful it, it was to to work there. Um, you know, constantly getting nasty emails from customers, where the hell are my funds? Um, you know, always getting bad press, and then having to work for this. Kind of buffoon of a, a boss, and uh, just you know, trying. You just I can just imagine you want to shake him, you know. Um, so I, I imagine it was a stressful place to work, and people are probably pretty damn relieved to that the uh, the ride is over for them at least. So much potential lost, Megan Lords. Yeah, I can't really be surprised by this. Um, of course he would buy all of these ridiculous things, uh, and I don't really see it as much different from the other ridiculous things that CEOs of other companies buy when they get really wealthy, or these big bankers. Uh, yeah, it's a terrible exchange. I, I think it mirrors, um, you know, a lot of uh, kind of the legacy banking institutions too, and, and all of these older banks and the 
uh, extravagance that these bankers are living in. Uh, at least in his case, at least we hope, no one got killed. No, you know, the, the money wasn't laundered to supply uh, king, drug kingpins with weapons and things like that. But he's obviously a terrible person, and I don't think he feels any remorse for what he's done. Uh, so, yeah, worst Bitcoin exchange ever. Well, just, yeah, he's just a terrible person, but, yeah, I can't really be surprised by this. That's sad when the only nice thing you can say about him is he didn't get anyone killed. Paige Peterson. Yeah, and it's also great that um, they're not getting any bailouts or anything like other banks uh, probably would. Um, yeah, it's just a case of terrible business model that was the biggest, mo like the biggest business that in Bitcoin for a long time. So they were in the position of being able to take advantage of people and. Uh, thankfully, that's not going to happen again because there isn't going to be, like, the first exchange anymore. People are going to be more aware of what they're getting into. So, um, you know, again, it's just a, it's a good learning experience for people that weren't aware of uh, bad actors in the market. Um, but it's obviously very unfortunate that it had an effect on so many people. But just bad business, that's all it is. A very expensive lesson for a lot of people. Will Pangman. How ridiculous is this? Um, you know, it's like he buys all these toys. This, I mean, Honda Civic? <laughs> I don't care how souped up it is. I guess he's in Tokyo, but what the heck? Is he drifting? I mean, what's <laughs> missing from this loot? Is it a uh, bouncy castle and a go-kart track we're still yet to uncover? I mean, this is like Billy Madison before he meets Miss Vaughn. Uh, you know, I wish I could remember the entire speech that the moderator gives in that uh, competition he has at the end of that movie, but I'll just skip to the end. Everyone in the Bitcoin community is now dumber for having allowed you to be a CEO and conducted business, conducted business with you. Uh, yeah, wow. Absolutely. Davi Barker. I'm tired of talking about Mt. Gox. I think it's time everybody took their money out of Mt. Gox. <laughs> no, so, uh, no. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, we knew all of this. Like, like when we talk about like the mysterious collapse of Mt. Gox, we obviously knew that money was going to 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 fraudulent and illicit places places in the organization. Otherwise, it would have been solvent. So um, I'm not surprised by this at all. I think it's it's good that the truth is coming out, uh, but we shouldn't be surprised by it. Derek J. Worst Bitcoin exchange ever. There will never be one so bad because no exchange will arise from outside the Bitcoin market. It's worth repeating that Mt. Gox was not originally designed to be a Bitcoin exchange. And it may still be a roller coaster of a ride ahead, but I think we've seen the worst of the exchanges dumped for good. Exit question. If you could misuse funds and not get caught, what single ridiculous, impractical luxury item would you buy? Chris J. A giant frappe latte and more black turtlenecks. <laughs> Christoph Atlas. Uh, I have two ideas. One is uh, a mini-series based on the life of Mark Capelli's. Uh, first series is going to be about him as the last samurai. Uh, second one is uh, Tokyo Drift. And then the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to buy an island and a missile defense shield, and we're going to call it Bitcoin Island, and all of the Bitcoiners are going to move there, and we're going to just uh, fend off the state from outside yeah, yeah. Our, our host wants to move there, too. <laughs> Man, he really thought that one out. Megan Lords. I would buy the ridiculous, impractical government. <laughs> the whole it. thing. The whole thing. Just, yeah, mean, you could get I, that, you could get that in Bitcoin. I don't think of any things that I would want, though. I don't know. I think <laughs> that's, a, that's a toxic asset. <laughs> yeah. Paige Peterson. Well, I guess uh, if, I, if I had to do it, um, I would probably buy one of those, um, uh, like a really souped up motorcycle, like the ones that you find in, um, oh man, I'm missing the, the name of the movie, um, never mind, a really souped up motorcycle, because <laughs> I, I don't have one anymore, and Excellent. I think it would be fun to have. <laughs> Will Pangman. Uh, Tesla's for all my employees. 
<laughs> Tesla's for everybody. Davi Barker. You know, you guys have really caught me off guard with this one. Uh, I think I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to go back to my first childhood dream of a vehicle, which was the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle van. And it would have to be fully functioning. It would have to have the like thing that opens in the back and the the, the side door that pops up and the Gatling gun on the top and it'd have to have internet everything and it would have to have an oven for pizza. And uh, the only thing better than that I can think of is the Technodrome tubes, those drill front modules that go underground and lava would spurt up. Those would be cool too. So I think both the hero and villain vehicles of the old 1980s Ninja Turtles cartoon, that's what I would want. Here's a million dollar idea for anyone out there listening. A pizza food truck that's exactly what Javi just described. <laughs> yes. <laughs> for the record, I just read Ready Player One, so I was thinking maybe a Mech Warrior robo suit. Or uh, Davi just reminded me of the character's car. He had a DeLorean that also had parts of Ecto-1 and parts of Knight Rider on it. So definitely anything from Ready Player One would be great for me. Moving on, issue four, Bitcoin and sports. Geeks don't watch sports, usually, but that's all starting to change. With Bitcoin Fight Night this weekend, the Bitcoin debate that precedes it, to be streamed live on worldcryptonetwork.com, the Sacramento Kings, and now the San Jose Earthquakes, major league soccer team, all accepting Bitcoin. The world of sports is exploding with Bitcoin mania, but so far it's only been a team or two here and there. Which major sporting league will go all in and accept Bitcoin first? Chris J. Or, uh, Christoph Atlas. Sorry. Uh, what about the uh, the UFC, the Ultimate Fighting Championship? They're kind of a uh... They're a new sport. They're trying to do stuff new. Uh, maybe they'll be the first uh, official league to uh, take on Bitcoin. Good answer. Outside the box. Megan Lords. Okay, so team sports was one of my least favorite things to do in school because I would always be the last person picked for the team. And uh, then those people made fun of me after the team sports section. So, yeah, I don't know anything about sports. I don't really care who takes them but it'll be good. <laughs> Paige Peterson. Yeah, I guess I wasn't aware that, like, the National Leagues had control over which, like, what gets accepted as payment for the sports teams. Um, so I don't know if that's true or if it's possible for an actual league to be like, everyone accept Bitcoin, but, uh, yeah, I don't have an answer. I don't watch sports. <laughs> uh, Will Pangman. So I would really like to see my favorite sports team, which is the only major sports franchise that's community-owned, the Green Bay Packers, implement Bitcoin. They won't, I'm sure of that, but that would be cool. What I would really like to see even more is a whole league with its bylaws and all of the, uh, um, the CBA, the... Uh, um, collective bargaining agreements, and all of the things that go into sports politics on the league level today uh, put on a blockchain and implemented with this uh, cryptocurrency technology, perhaps with an Ethereum or MasterCoin type of protocol, and smart contracts for all the employees. Thank you, Christoph. Um, and, uh, or, you know, all the, all the players. Uh, you could choose to take government fiat or Bitcoin as your salary, and maybe that would be certain advantages for the players and, or, or even the guys, uh, the boxers or the fighters. Uh, I know men and women participate in UFC, so the fighters in, in UFC could maybe choose their payout in, uh, in Bitcoin. I mean, the World Poker uh, Championship, you know, the World Series of Poker, maybe they could choose the cash or a Bitcoin payout, and I bet a lot of those guys would take, uh, take Bitcoin as the option. So it's endlessly, there's, the possibilities are endless, but I think it'd be really attractive. You have um, things like the NFL, which are a behemoth, and in the 70s, something called the USFL tried to compete. It was started by Donald Trump, among other people, and it failed miserably. But if it could, uh, you know, it could avoid some of the um, antitrust violating protectionism that they encountered, that is the USFL, you know, the, the NFL had antitrust protection um, is, you know, forcing the USFL to fold, essentially, 
uh, unfair competition. But anyway, it, they could compete with a community sourced model such as cryptocurrency overlaid on the on the top. So that would be really fascinating to me. I think players would prefer that system and try to play in that league as opposed to the existing league structures, which are really predatory if you look at them, especially the NFL. So um, yeah, that would be cool. That's a great idea, Will. I was just hoping that the NFL would accept Bitcoin. I hadn't even started to imagine NFL coin and that they could just wrap everything up. I mean, talk about control. be fantastic. Davi Barker. I, um, I think part of the power of Bitcoin is to see emerging new systems and emerging new product pro projects as a result of crowdfunding. So when I think about what league will be next, I imagine it will be a league that does not currently exist, but one which would succeed as a result of crowdfunding. And when I think about the kind of gladiatorial sports that succeed as a result of crowdfunding, I think about Robot Wars. Do you remember this show? I actually competed in one of these once, and you had these teams of people that would, that would custom make these robots, remote control robots, and then they would clash them against each other, and they were cutters and spinners and flippers and crushers, and those were crowdfunded projects. So I think with the success of crowdfunding in Bitcoin, a new Robot Wars League will probably be the first professional sports league to accept Bitcoin. I'm right there with you, Davi. I love Robot Wars. I even attended live once. I thought for a minute you were going to say Quidditch, though. Derek, <laughs> Jay. Robot Wars makes a lot of sense. I also think Major League Baseball might give us a curveball and uh, provide a little injection to America's favorite pastime, which seems to be waning in popularity. But uh, also, I think it might not even be in the U.S. We might uh, more... I, I would predict soccer in a place like Europe would accept Bitcoin before any major sports team in the U.S. Chris J., soccer or football? Oh, I was going to say that. You stole it. Okay, what about uh, chess boxing? I think, uh, you know, all good civilizations start with thinkers and warriors. So I think that would be very fitting for Bitcoin. It's both robust and smart at the same time. Can I talk a little bit about our show tomorrow? I'm trying to picture the chess boxing where they have to play with the gloves on. Yeah, I don't exactly know how it works. I've only ever heard about it. But, yeah, apparently they right. box for a bit and then they... <laughs> All right, but yeah, tell us about Bitcoin Fight Night this weekend. That is okay. tomorrow. Yeah, so I'm, I'm trying to organize on Twitter at the moment. Can you see my screen? I'm trying to organize a flash mob at the O2 tomorrow at the Indigo. This has already got 19 retweets, quite a few favorites. Let's fill this place up with Bitcoiners tomorrow, 3 p.m. Uh, you go to the meetup page. And uh, luckily, we've had uh, Richard Muirhead, uh, who's the managing partner at uh, uh, Firestarter um, in the UK, has stepped in. And basically, Tom, he's going to be paying for the live stream on the World Crypto Network, pretty much. He's, he stepped in at the last minute because we weren't sure how we were going to do it. It's all been a bit of a mad rush. I'd also like to give a big shout out to, to Mike Raft, who you featured in your little clip there. He's the uh, martial artist and actor who went on to the Kaiser Report to take on Max Kaiser, dressed up as Jamie Dimon, and a very, very brave man. And he actually wasn't, he wasn't just acting either. He genuinely meant a lot of what he said in that, in that show. It was a very good, uh, very good performance by him. And also to like, you know, Matt and Patrick, who, like I said, sort of came up to me uh, in a bar, just said, look, we've had this crazy idea. We've just hired out the O2 and then all of the community has just come around them. You know, Cecile and Paul from, from CoinScrum, which is now the largest uh, Bitcoin meetup group in the world, actually. We've got like 1,700 members. Um, yeah, it's absolutely it's absolutely huge, and I'm I'm really looking forward to it. And, and Max has been brilliant as well. If you ever get the pleasure of working with Max Kaiser, I know he's quite a polarizing figure, but he spent so much time with us. He didn't have to. Um, he's not getting paid for it. He, he we sat down with him in in the hotel in Hoxton, you know, in the lobby, and we just sat down. He gave us way more time than I even think that he had. He was coming up with some great ideas for what we would do on the show and everything. So this is a real kind of community effort I think this is like you know because Matt's only a taxi driver the guy that, that started this he's not a big tycoon it's a lot of money for him uh, to put into this so we're looking forward to putting on a good show tomorrow and, do, and also doing the world crypto network some, some good coverage as well hopefully absolutely and if you'd like to tune in tomorrow morning at 7am on the west coast that's 10 o'clock in the east 
It's actually evening in England. You can watch us on the worldcryptonetwork.com. We're going to be having a Bitcoin debate. And that guy did do some very good acting. I, I disliked him very much as Jamie Dimon. Yeah, actually, can I just want to say one thing, actually? If we... If at the moment, 231 people have signed up, okay? This will be, I think, if every one of those turns up, it will be the second largest Bitcoin meetup we've ever had in the UK. If all of those then attend the kickboxing later, because that's just for the panel debate first at 3 o'clock, and all the kickboxing fans turn up as well, that will be the largest Bitcoin meetup, I think, in the world of all time. So make your way down to the O2. It's free to get in at 3 o'clock into the Indigo. You don't have to pay. Um, we've got limited uh, seats available at £15 each. If you do want to stay for the kickboxing, that will be a ticketed event. Uh, but come down anyway and just enjoy the panel discussion, even if you just want to learn new things about, about Bitcoin. I think somebody's going to coolio from the troll box is going to be giving away some bitcoins and litecoins on paper wallets, so it's definitely worth coming down. Very cool, Coolio. And again, if you're in London, you should go to this. This is a historic event, and you can be a part of it tomorrow. Moving on to questions and answers. What fee will Square charge for accepting Bitcoin? The same 2.75%? I believe that is correct. The other Bitcoin businesses usually charge around 1%, but I know that Square had upped their fees. Uh, you know, they're early adopter. They want to make a little money. So probably all right. Let's see. What else we got? Um, maybe something like Square could process those transactions at the cash register. They cost about $20 for an iPhone adapter, probably not more to update registers. So another person agreeing that we'd love to see Square expand into cash registers and more businesses. Michelle Seven writes, has anyone seen the very serious Chris J smile in the last few days? I'm concerned. Maybe we can get a nice smile out of Chris J. No, more of a smirk. We'll keep working on that, Michelle. Hi, hang on, can I just, what, what, what? What's happened to me? We want oh, you to file more. I've, I've been look. I've been working very, very hard. I'm, I'm a bit stressed, but once this weekend is over, well, I'll be able to smile again. Just one more day, and then kick. <laughs> Crypto coin user says Walmart is barely making any profits, so they're desperate to claw back even 0.1 percent. We should all feel bad for Walmart and their lack of profits. Let's see. Guys, got a question. Um, oh, a guy, a guy would like to make a, um, a Bitcoin community would fund a healing album um, through Bitcoin entirely for a cancer charity and could be done with his friend and producer of Peter, Peter Gabriel. So that sounds interesting. I'd like to see that. Uh, definitely, and remember with Bitcoin, it's pretty easy to crowdfund. You just put a wallet out there, put a link to the wallet through blockchain.info at the Blockchain Explorer, and everyone can monitor how much uh, funds you're getting if people are donating a lot or a little. It's all right there at blockchain.info. So I definitely check it out. Red Herring says that the Pirate Party would get his vote. So maybe he would donate a great amount of Bitcoin to the Pirate Party if he had it. And I think we all might. The Pirate Party's pretty cool. Uh, Silverminer also says that Rick Falkvinge, founder of the Pirate Party, is discussing how Bitcoin can double the profit margins of large corporations. Sounds like a good video. Check it out on YouTube. Let's see. Guys, guys, email here. Um, I'm not. Is anyone familiar with the BitSat satellite or BitSat project? Is that where um, one of the Bitcoin developers is trying to get a Bitcoin node in space? I'm generally in favor of that. You guys, agree. All right, we're starting to run out of questions, and that means it's time for everyone's favorite part of the show, predictions, the part where you get to predict the future or give us a story of the week or a final thought. Are you ready? Davi Barker, pouring water. Uh, my prediction is that the IRS is going to see very low compliance on their recent guidelines for taxing of Bitcoin. Derek, Jay. Yes, final thought. Watch Bitcoin Fight Night tomorrow, April 5th, 3 p.m. London time, noon Eastern. Tweet and follow along, at Bitcoin Fight. On Twitter. Chris, Jay. So I'd like to draw 
people's attention to this guy at Bitcoin Joker. I've been engaging with him. He's a famous troll of Bitcoin, and he recently sent me an email to say that, regrettably, he would he he'd, he'd enjoyed our exchanges on Twitter. We often did have very long, um, quite heated, uh, although civilized for the most part, debates about Bitcoin. He has now left uh, Twitter because uh, somebody uncovered him, uh, somebody doxed him. They, they found out who he was and was starting to reveal that information. And he wrote a very kind of heartfelt email saying, look, all I was trying to do was raise awareness because I, he felt that people like us were bullying uh, members of the public into buying an asset that was very, very risky. Now, I would read out this tweet because this one's really what got me. Bitcoin is really about young, intelligent, overqualified debt slaves finding false hope in a sea of minimum wage jobs. And I have to say there were a number of these. A lot of it, a lot of it was just out and out 100% trolling, like for sure. But every now and again, he would say something that would just kind of like jive me a little bit like I would just kind of think hmm okay that's a little bit that's a little bit close for comfort right and so all I would say is we do need to even though we can't stand it everyone deserves the right to freedom of speech even if we really 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 disagree with them and even if we don't want to have to hear it because every now and again he would say something that I felt needed that we needed to address so we are going to be featuring some questions for him tomorrow uh, on on the panel debate albeit controversially just because I do think that um, you know all of those areas do need to be covered even if we don't want to hear it it's quite a good tweet it reminds me a little of the story of Pandora's box when they opened the box and they let all mm. the bad things out then they quickly yeah. closed it they trapped hope inside uh, Atlas <laughs> I'm exciting. I'm exciting. Uh, expecting a really fantastic debate tomorrow. I'm really excited for that. I'm, exci I'm expecting there to be really stimulating conversation from both sides of the Bitcoin debate. I'm looking forward to uh, talking and debating with some bank-friendly members of the public, and uh, I think it'll be really fun to watch. I'm looking forward to Max Kaiser strapping on that spandex for a full force wrestling match. Megan Lords. I have an announcement to make. I will be interviewing Christoph Atlas of the Bitcoin Group on Sunday. We'll be talking about wallet security and whatever else happens to come up at 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So please come check that out if you're a fan of the Bitcoin Group and of Christoph's work. So it should be really interesting. I'm really excited. Paige Peterson. So I'm going to make a prediction that the next big thing for merchants, online and offline merchants, to start doing is going towards uh, methods to accept all different kinds of altcoins, um, not just Bitcoin. That's going to be the next, like, this is what, look at me, like, I'm trying to get attention and get new customers, so I'm going to accept altcoins as well. I can only hope they'll let me pay with combinations of currency so I can make it as confusing as possible when I check out. Will Pangman. Um, yeah, I was. I don't know. I had a couple ideas of what to share, but um, I guess the the first thing at the top of my mind right now is for uh, all of us who are very enthusiastic and um, ideological about Bitcoin to you know who have a voice. That's everyone on this panel. That's many of the people watching this who who will watch it down the road. To um, just take note of the audience whenever you're uh, sharing Bitcoin with a group or another person. Take note of them and be um, empathetic to their position and why they may have some of the confusions or, or you know, um, poor ideas about Bitcoin. And make sure that you are coming from a place that's inclusive and that you know Bitcoin is for everyone. Uh, regardless of ideology, affiliation, background, and all that. I think that's really important as we get to kind of the tipping point here for mass adoption. Uh, we're close, and with, you know, we talked a lot about Square and Stripe and lots of different things, sports teams bringing it into the mainstream, and so many things are bringing this into the mainstream. And there's still a lot of resistance out there from you know, folks who uh, grew up with an Austrian, or a, rather a Keynesian view of economics, or folks who come from, um, you know, let's say the left-leaning background who aren't um, maybe as forward-thinking on, on technology, more Luddite lefties, if you will, or um, just whoever they may be, uh, inexperienced with, a, with an underformed understanding 
of Bitcoin to um, keep in check your ideological strengths or biases or whatever you want to call it and, and consider that, uh, that you be inviting of these people because they will come back to you and they will want to be involved and they may still have their ideology intact and that's okay. The most important thing is that they uh, use this tool because it really will accomplish even some of their, their goals with that ideology uh, and, and to help them see that. So please uh, keep that in consideration, everyone out there. The only thing better than a cryptographically proven exchange is a decentralized exchange. And they'll be coming soon, but they won't include fiat. Crypto to crypto only, for now. Also, if anyone's looking for a good book to read, check out Ready Player One. It's fantastic. 80s cultures, video game references, excellent book. We're out of time. Until next time, bye-bye. <laughs>